And now I'm going to show you what one looks like. I have this one right here. And look how it looks in the middle. Pretty cool. Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. Today I'm going to show you how to make cake sickles. I had a request to make cake sickles, so here we go. That's what we're going to do. They're really easy to do, simple ingredients. If I can do it, you can do it. Before I move on, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Let's get started. Down below in the description box, you'll find the list of the ingredients and their amounts. Begin by making a cake. I have several cake recipes here on my channel that you can use, or you can just use a box cake mix if you want. So once your cake is baked, make sure to let it cool completely. And I just divided it in half because I want to show you a couple methods on what we need to do to break it up. So we want to break this cake up into little crumbs, exactly the same way as what we would do for cake pops. And so I'm just going to take this half and put it in this large bowl. And I'm just going to use some gloves. I don't normally wear gloves when I am working at home and making food for myself. Um, but it's not a bad idea to wear gloves, especially because this part gets a little, um, can get a little sticky. But we're just going to break this up into crumbs. If you haven't seen my cake pop video, make sure to go take a look at that as well. Up there in the eye, you can find a link to that video or also down below in the description box. Okay, so you just break them up until the crumbs are fairly fine. Another method that you can try, you can take a plastic bag. And break that cake apart and put it in the plastic bag. And then what you'll do, let me move that out of the way, is you'll just smash the cake in the bag. You don't want too much air in it though, so you can seal it up and then you can just go like this. This works really well. Maybe you don't have gloves and you don't want to touch the cake. Then you can do it like this if you want, okay? And just place the crumbs in a large bowl. And now what we want to do is we want to add frosting. And I have about a cup of frosting here, but we want to just take a tablespoon and do, start with two big heaping tablespoons worth, and then we want to mix this in with the cake crumbs, okay? And you wanna keep mixing it until it resembles like a Play-Doh. So you want it to be able to hold its shape and look about like this. So that's pretty good. In my cake pop video, I was not using gloves and there were just a handful of people that were kind of grossed out by that. Even though my hands are always clean when I do this, and I was making them for myself. But if you're gonna make them, if you're at a bakery or if you're gonna make them to sell them or give them away, then you probably wanna use gloves. Okay, so here we have, we have a mound of cake-like Play-Doh. <laughs> that is the best way to describe it. And now we wanna go on to the molds. Okay, I have two different sizes of cake sickle molds or they're just like little popsicle molds. And I have a smaller size here, which is about the size of maybe two cake pops, and then a larger size. And I'll put a link down below where you can pick these up. I just found them on Amazon. What's cool about them is they come, they come with their own little popsicle sticks. I'm gonna show you two different methods to do this. One is we're gonna just take our cake mixture and stuff it right in there. And try to get it as level as possible. 
All right, once you have your cake in here, what we want to do is now we want to insert the treat sticks or the popsicle sticks. There's a little slit on the bottom here that you can put these in. And so you're just going to poke these in through the cake and go till you get to the end here and just push it down as needed like that. So just slide it in there and then push down on the top again. All right, pretty cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in the freezer or the refrigerator. I put them in the freezer for about 20 minutes and we wanna let that cake set and harden. All right. Now when it comes to the chocolate, you can use whatever kind of chocolate that you want. You could just use candy bars. You could use chocolate chips. You could use the candy melts. Also, my favorite is to use is this, it's called Candy Quick. And they have a couple different flavors. They have um, normal chocolate flavor, and then they have the vanilla flavor. This just melts really, really thin, and it's really great for dipping. And I just got this at Walmart. It's like three bucks for one of these, and it's a lot of chocolate. Um, and you could probably find it at Target as well. And you could also find it online. I'll put a link down below where you can get this melt it in the microwave in a microwave safe bowl or you could also do this on the stove top with a double boiler all right so i just melted about half of that white candy quick and put it in this glass it just makes it easier to dip and then once you take these out of the freezer they'll be nice and stiff and you just kind kind of um just kind of pull on the mold a little bit and poke it out and then push on the bottom here of the uh, stick and then you can pull it out like that and then we're going to go straight in and kind of tilt it around a little bit you can tilt the glass if you don't have enough candy quick in there and then just go straight out with it let the excess drip off just set it down on a sheet pan or cookie sheet line with a you know parchment paper or like a silicone mat. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dip the rest of these. All right, so I have some candy melts here, and this is about a cup, cup and a half of the blue, light blue candy melts. And I'm just gonna melt this in the microwave. Um, use half power, or you can use a defrost setting, and then you're gonna go for about 30 seconds and then stir and then put it in and go for 30 seconds and then stir until it's nice and melted. Okay, great. And now I'm gonna take the bigger mold here and just show you a alternative way that we can do this is what we wanna do is we're gonna take some of the candy melt and we're gonna go in the mold. And then we're gonna spread out the candy melts or chocolate, whatever you're using. And then we want to coat the edges also. So just use the back of your spoon and go up and use, add more as necessary. Once you have it up around the sides, I'm gonna take my treat stick and just put it in there a little bit, just because I don't want that hole to get plugged up. You can also come in with a pastry brush and just paint them around the sides. That works really well also. But if you don't have a pastry brush, then just use the back of your spoon. Another option is once you pour it in, is you tilt your mold all around and then it coats all the edges and then you just scrape off the excess. So you'll come in here and you'll just scrape off the excess. And the last thing, the last thing I want to do is kind of Come in here and just take out any extra, extra chocolate candy melts because you don't want it super thick. Or you could put less in to begin with. It just Sometimes you just get carried away and add a little bit too much. Okay, and then once you have the, the sticks in, the sides and everything coated, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator or freezer for about 10 minutes to let this set. Once you take it out of the fridge, I'm gonna grab some more of the blue candy melts and just go along the edges a little bit. 
just to thicken up those edges. Once you get the edges done, come in here with the cake again. And then you want to just push it down in there and you want to kind of get underneath that stick. Kind of use your finger to kind of tuck underneath where that stick is. All right, and you don't want to go all the way to the top because you want to leave room for the top layer of candy melts or chocolate. And then so at this point, I'm going to push the stick in all the way to the edge and just push down again on the, cho on the cake. All right, and then when you're done, come back over to your blue candy melts. And if it, it probably won't, wouldn't have hardened by now, but if it does, you can just put it back in the microwave. And we'll put some of this on top. And we'll just spread it out. And cover the whole thing. So I encourage you to try both of these methods. I'll call this the painting method. And then the dipping method and see what you like the best, what works the best for you. Okay, and then what I wanna do is I'm gonna come in here with my little cake spatula, or you just use the back of a knife. And just kind of make sure that it's level. And then what you can do is you can hold this above the chocolate and just scrape, scrape that in, any extras. All right, and then back in the fridge it goes for about 15, 20 minutes until the top sets. And now these ones have set, and you can just kind of pull on the sides a little bit of the mold and just kind of push underneath it a little bit to remove the pop, and then kind of just pull this out. This is a nice and shiny look. So that's one benefit to doing it this way in the mold, is it gives it a nice, cool, shiny look. And there's less chance that the stick is going to fall out because you're not dipping it with the weight. So I like doing it this way, the painting method, for the large ones. And then if you want, I just took some candy melts and put them in a little bag and snipped out the corner. And then we can just put on a little zigzag for a design if you want. And you can also just leave them plain if you want. And now I'm gonna show you what one looks like. I have this one right here. And look how it looks in the middle. Pretty cool and tastes awesome. Once they are all done, you can leave them like that. But if you're gonna give them away or sell them, you can buy these treat bags um, by Wilton. And I'll put a link down below where you can find them. I just got them on Amazon. And it's just a little plastic bag. And you can take it and then you'll open it up. You'll put your cake sickle in there. And then what you can do is take one of the ties. It comes with these little ties, little twisty ties. And then you can twist these on here. And there you go. And that'll help protect them as well. It's kind of nice. And you can decorate it. You can like, you use like a colored full ribbon or something like that. If you wanted, you don't have to use the ties that came with it. But that's kind of a cool way to package them. All right, the cake sickles are done and turned out fantastic. Really easy to do, simple ingredients. If I can do it, you can do it. Couple of tips, both methods work well, the dipping method and the painting method. I don't really recommend the dipping method for the really large ones because it just becomes really, really heavy and it's that much easier to fall off the stick. So just use the painting method on those. And then the, the smaller ones, the dipping method works well. Same with, the dip, same with the painting method. Try both ways and see which one you like the best. 
I'm Matt Taylor. This has been another episode of In the Kitchen with Matt. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or requests, put them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thumbs up, down the corner, push it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Take care. Time for me to dive into one of these. Oh yeah. I think I'll go grab this one right here. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm.